is James Chirillo. I play acoustic rhythm guitar with Jazz at Lincoln Center. When they need to add guitar, I'm usually the guy they call. So we're going to talk about how to play, what we should be playing when we're playing in the style of Freddie Green. If you listen to some of his older recordings with, say, the Kansas City Six, he's playing fuller chords, more notes in his chords, say, three, four notes here and there, and that worked there because he only had a few horns that he was really playing up against. It was basically rhythm section and a couple of horns, and sometimes Billie Holiday. Once he got into that, the later edition of the band where we ended up with uh, four trumpets, four trombones, and five saxophones, that's a lot more weight. And he honed his style down to what really, what the band needed to hear, and the dancers. And that's something we must always keep in mind. This music, and we're talking about that swing music of the 20s, 30s, 40s, and into the 50s, that was all music for dancing. So, if you've ever watched swing dancers, Yes, they're feeling those offbeats, but they're shifting their weight on beats one and three. So we have to have a firm foundation in one and three. He honed it down so that he would play either one or two notes, and he would think of that as a tenor harmony line against the bass player's bass line. So what does that mean to us? What that means to us is, in a previous lesson I spoke about how the arch top of the guitar gives you more tension on the string and gives you more punch. Well, the two strings right in the middle of that curve, right in the center of the bridge, the third and fourth strings, those have really the most tension on them. Those are our best strings for playing rhythm. The fourth string in particularly, it's a heavier string, it's, and, um, if you listen to, uh, say, Freddie Green in April in Paris, he's just playing, a lot of times he's playing just one or two notes, and when he's on that one note, it's always on the fourth string. That's, that's the best thing for us to be thinking of at all times. And the tempo is what determines, really, how many notes he may add, note or notes he may add to his chord. The faster it goes, the more he would focus on that single note tenor line to the bass player's bass line. So what we want to do, the bass player generally on beats one and three, he's going to aim for the strong beats of that measure. He's going to aim for roots, fifths. We've heard that, we've heard that forever. For you and me, our job is to play the other basic determining note of that sonority, if it's major or minor, it's, that's the third. Or the seventh, dominant seventh, that's always a strong note. Maybe the sixth, if it's just a major chord, a tonic chord, and the note for us on the fourth string that resonates best with that bass, that could be the sixth. In that we're thinking of that as a tenor line, and the bass player also, when he's playing his bass line, he, he just doesn't go Boom, 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 the entire, the entire time. He's walking a line, sometimes scale-wise, into the next strong beat of the measure. Sometimes he's doing a little chromatic approach, just sliding in, half step above or below. And we've, we start thinking the same way. So we, when we start playing our quarter notes, we're playing those thirds, we're focusing on the thirds, sevenths, and we're harmonizing with that bass, a tenor line with that bass player's bass line. So for instance, say an I got rhythm in B flat, the basic chords, B flat, G minor, C minor, F7, that repeats, then B flat, B flat seven, could uh, E flat, then maybe E flat minor, or E diminished. You've gotta use your ear, pay attention to the chart if you've got one see what direction the bass player plays. <laughs> That's always a good hint. 
and uh, I'm going to play the diminished this time around. And then it goes back to B flat, and then another six, two, five turnaround. So, bass players, bass notes. So he's not just going to be doing those notes, I was just playing half notes there, uh, only those notes. He's going to be walking scale-wise lines through there. He's going to be walking chromatic approaches in there, little half-step approaches into his chords. On the strong beats of the bar, he's going to lay for those chord tones, and that's exactly how we need to think, too, with our rhythm. The strong notes of the chord, then, for us, are going to be the thirds and the sevenths, sometimes the sixth. But those are the notes that we're going to really concentrate on putting on that fourth string. And the faster it goes, the less we play. We just hone it down to that one note. Once in a while, we can throw in two notes just because it's, it's good. it changes up the density. It fills out the sonority for a second to throw in a couple of notes. It's sort of, it's unpredictable, so it keeps that rhythm moving forward, even though, of course, we're not playing any faster. We shouldn't be anyway. So... For instance, here we, here we go with maybe, I'll, I'll just stay on one string all the way through, uh, one chorus of I Got Rhythm in B flat. One, two, a one, two, three. So, you notice on most of those, all of those, now that I think about it, I wasn't walking a lot of different notes in there like a bass player would. That's a different, that's a different kind of head. Our job is the tenor voice, and I'm sure Freddie was aware of this. He may not have specifically studied this and developed his style upon this, but you know he was aware of it. If you look at any of the Bach chorales, he wrote 371 of them, J.S. Bach chorales. Look at that tenor voice, and nine times out of ten, the tenor voice is hitting two quarter notes before he changes, or she changes. So you'll see the melody and maybe the bass moving in contrary motion. All the while through, that tenor voice is just one, two, one, two, like so. Because what that does is it helps keep the sonority and the tonal function of that chord that we're playing in the clear. If everybody's doing this, playing all these lines, moving on every beat, it can really sound to be like a, a dogfight out there. So, that's why you listen to Freddie, he honed that thing down, that one note at that faster tempo, one string, keeps everybody happy. You really hear the entire harmony of the tune that you're playing. The soloist does, the band does, and the band may not hear every single individual note that you're playing, but with a properly set up instrument, you're going to hear that punch, and you're also going to be outlining that quarter note. That's the other part of the job that we're doing. We're playing that tenor line to the bass player's bass line, and we are really outlining and really accentuating, giving that pulse, the heartbeat of the band. <laughs> 